Welcome all to today's Hot Planet Repair Team meeting for June 30th, 2022. We are going to start off with Allison. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, so we have a few updates. I'm probably going to, at most points, pass it over <laughs> either to Alan or Tyler. We'll go quickly through our updates just to let you know what's going on, and then we can have a discussion. So for our fundraising, we're starting a new campaign. So the goal is to launch it on July 12th. So it's going to be the first phase and the goal is to raise the rest of the money essentially for the demonstration facility. We started developing some marketing materials. We have a couple of backgrounders and some key messages and we're going to create a package that will be finished next week. And then we will launch it officially on July 12th. So I will pass it over to Tyler to talk maybe a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah, sure. We have a, a couple of different single sheet overviews for people to kind of get a summary of some of the initiatives HPRT is doing, and that'll come in play with the other campaigns that are being launched. Some people are interested in different aspects and what they can do to help. And we're also targeting both corporate and individual donors. So just trying to address and motivate people in both segments. On the philanthropic side, I know John Pagley here is really focused on getting a campaign focused on corporate donors, which is great. And also I've been working quite a bit on finding other impact oriented companies that want to collaborate that already have a global footprint that are growing and that are focusing around planet repair. It's been just wonderful being able to connect with these other change makers that are doing the work of untrashing and cleaning the planet. I've just been blessed with getting to meet some incredible people lately and have phenomenal meetings with people that are ready to get to work or have been getting to work for some time now. On the developed marketing materials, uh, I think there are three, right, Allison? Yeah, so we have the two backgrounders. We've developed the key messages for three different groups, mm -hmm. and we're going to start working on an infographic that will just kind of demonstrate the benefits of the facility. I know that Pulem, I think, is working on an article to talk about the sort of scientific benefits of the type of agriculture we're talking about. Great. That's perfect. She's really got a great background for writing about that with her PhD in the space. Also, one of the documentaries that I watched recently that I wanted to share, at least in our meeting with some of the people here, is that there's a terminology called bioenergy carbon capture and storage. And there is an evaluation across all forms of energy production, life cycle analysis, when fossil fuels to wind and solar, et cetera, geothermal hydrothermal, nuclear, and that the only form across the life cycle analysis that had a carbon negative footprint for production of energy over its full life cycle was bioenergy carbon capture and storage. What we've put together with what we're doing with this demonstration facility is a showcasing of advanced bioenergy carbon capture and storage that is a carbon negative form of energy production. I don't know if it can be understated or overstated enough that it needs to be deployed globally if we're gonna be doing planet repair because we have to decarbonize all of our supply chains. It was fascinating to me that of all of the forms of energy production, this is the only one that's carbon negative. And it's not just production of energy, it's production of nanobiomaterials and carbon sequestering minerals in the built world and not just storing it under the earth We've got 50 billion tons of addressable carbon in the atmosphere a year. Finding a place to bury 50 billion tons a year might be a little tricky. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for that tangent, Allison. Just no. <laughs> get it out there. <laughs> That's important. It's an important yeah. part of the whole campaign. Mm -hmm. Community teams. Jake, the leader of this, is not here today, but Rich and I will <laughs> we'll have to talk a little yeah. bit about it. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, while on trashing the planet has to happen on a global level, it all really starts or it has to be done locally. If we can't untrash our own backyards, then we're not going to be successful on trashing globally either. So Jake kicked off Team Amsterdam. He created this poster that he's going to spread around the city and hopefully generate more interest and spread the word. Team Amsterdam is going to be our first one. We're going to reorganize the website a little bit, adding a Teams page where we can put specific information for community teams and uh, maybe events too. Hopefully events tend to be more local. So Wonderful. that's going to migrate there. And maybe even donations. I don't know if we're going to for sure, but some donations may be targeted for your local community too. That's going to be a little bit of a change on the website, but nothing major. That's the community effort is going. And I don't know, maybe Alan, you can talk about it a little bit. If we get to the competitive kind of thing, we can put Team Amsterdam against Team London and Woo! compare how they're doing yeah. down the Let's road. Do it. See. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, I, th I think we need that Alberta or Calgary team too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yes. 
Absolutely. Toronto. Go Toronto. Go <laughs> <All> Canada. <laughs> I don't know if you guys uh, have anything going on. I know it's not a foreign country, but in Chicago, um, that's where I'm at locally. And I do have an event space as well. I wouldn't mind trying to gain some excitement here locally and seeing if my group can get some flyers out and get some momentum. Thanks, Kelly. That'd be great. So, Allison, it sounds like we need to lift up a bunch of different posters for different cities. <laughs> yeah, you can we can do that. that on the list. We can do okay. that. Who wants to take leadership in each of the cities? Go ahead and comment in the chat or something and say you'd like to do that, like Kelly just did. And if you want to do it for your local city, we'll start supporting that. Well, I know, Alan, you said that you were going to do it in uh, Naples. Absolutely. I'll propose Greenwich, Connecticut. It's only an hour from me, but there's a more ready, endowed audience in that locality than where I am, which is quite nice, but it's it's not Greenwich. Greenwich is urban New York or ex-urban. Yeah. I'm planning on plagiarizing everything that uh, Jake does in Amsterdam anyway. Sounds like it's my the test market. Well. It's the test market. So we should be doing there that. You go. See, I have a friend, there's a thing in Toronto called the Beltway. So Toronto has this big, ugly highway that runs downtown and it's raised. And underneath it, they just started building this thing called the Bentway, which has all these like art exhibits and <clears throat> events. And then in the winter, they have a giant skating ring. So I actually know the guy who runs the Bentway. So maybe I'll see what, awesome. what we can yes. do there. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Alan, do you want to uh, chime in on the connectory? We're starting the architecture on the connectory. We made some introductions to a couple of team members yesterday on some of the software we might use. I think the next meeting will uh, we'll show you some diagrams. We're working on a pretty simple taxonomy. I boiled the problem and solutions down to basically it's all about life and trash. We want to make better lives and we want to untrash either air, land, or water. Those are the things we, we look at and how do we untrash the air? How do we untrash the water? How do we untrash the land? And how do we make life better on all those three things? And so we're working on a taxonomy that follows that and it's a pretty simple vision. It categorizes all of the different projects and things that we're looking at and doing and everybody else we're meeting it's doing things. It starts organizing them in an easy to understand manner. And I've met 20 to 30 people that are doing some form of reforestation or growing plants in a regenerative fashion. But it's so disorganized, it's crazy. We're going to hopefully get the architecture of this nailed down in the next week or two, and then we'll actually start building it. And I think one of the ideas on that, just from a conversation that I had of someone that wants to be in the connectory, as an example, helps create huge efficiencies for the growth of food, both plant food, as well as uh, fish, tilapia, and other fish for like aquaculture. Really incredible results that they're getting with countries that they're in around the world right now. They're excited to work with HPRT. So expressing that latest interest from phone calls with people over the last few days. Who wouldn't be interested in working with HPRT? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Well, that's why the connector is going to be so important. We have to organize it and prioritize all this interaction and activity going on. Yeah, it'll extend down to the local community too there because they need to connect with people locally. And in addition to the big projects, I can see this being a, a real good resource for our local teams. Yeah. Very important to connect where they are. That's awesome. On uh, grants, uh, we have one big grant filed with the USDA. We're working on a couple others. Allison, do you have a list of those that we're working on? Rich and I actually met this morning and we went through to, so we have a DOE grant. We just have a couple of questions with regards to that. So that's on biofuels. Then we have a couple of agriculture ones. Rich and I were looking at those today. One of them has a letter of intent. The other one doesn't. So the letter of intent is due in July and the applications are due August, September. So there's about three in the works right now. And I don't think any of them required matching. So yay. <laughs> I was about to uh, do one called C-PACE. Have you guys applied yep. for that one yet? Commercial PACE funding is a very strategic way of going about things, especially if you are assessing the property over a long period of time. We've looked at that in some other project financing areas that we've done. And obviously good if you've got the... <laughs> So the, the next goal, once we've got our fundraising campaign already, I know we're going to start looking at endowments and foundations in addition to government grants. Anyone that has suggestions, please, by all means, send them along. There's so many out there, it's kind of hard sometimes to get through them all.
Well, I'm teed up for that. I was thinking that Blackboard, you know, has a database, which I have yet to get to because I don't know how to do that in Blackboard yet. But I mean, there are plenty of resources out there. There are websites dedicated to that kind of thing. And also I was thinking pension plans and corporate sponsors, donors. You know, we've talked about Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Oracle. I mean, they're all talking the talk. The asset management firms uh, clearly, you know, are waving the flag on this. I've sent a few things about Goldman Sachs and others. I think it's fair to say that everyone's game. How do we boil the ocean, as it were, without drowning? I have a book by Tom J. Watson Jr. signed and made out to my grandmother in my suitcase because they would visit North Haven. They have been visiting the area for many generations. So I might see uh, Oliver Watson this summer, speaking of IBM. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no, that's great. No, that's, that's valuable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Knowing who to go to is one thing, but having close connectivity is even better. Yeah, I actually we know. Uh, yeah, Kit Watson. Kit so, Watson's boat yeah. just blew up in, in Portsmouth Harbor. It's a friend of the family. Good stuff. Thanks. Thanks, Marco. What's next, Allison? Just any questions, comments? Anyone had any input? Well, it sounds like we got to organize for a bunch of local activity. Yes. I have one idea. Speaking of billboards, I've got a huge interest in interstate fronted real estate assets. And I've been evaluating three different properties just to invest in from a personal standpoint. And I've always wanted and had the dream of dethroning Ford, taking out the largest billboard in the world. If I ever accomplish that goal, I'd be more than happy to put the HBRT logo on there. Film industry next. Yeah. <laughs> I've just been uh, talking nonstop with people on a number of fronts, promoting Hot Planet Repair Team. We got a group out of New Zealand yesterday. So it was probably really early in the morning for them when we spoke, but great Maori descendant that really want to be a part of HPRT and what we're doing and be the New Zealand team. Wonderful. Congrats. Yes. Yeah, we'll have to work on our hakas. <laughs> the HPRT haka. We'll let them take over that one. Yeah, I, I lived in New Zealand and uh, the Center for Maori Studies in New Zealand, University of Waikato. So it was great to connect with one of the tribal guys. Do you guys have the signs you put out in the grass that are advertisement or whatever? I don't have a billboard, but one of our properties is on an Illinois state route, and we get more than ten to 15,000 cars a day that pass us. There you uh, go. If you had those printed or if you have the design work. that could Lawn be sign. Lawn signs, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we could absolutely put something like that together. And the question is, how many million of them do we need? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a little bit of momentum going on here locally for a number of things. I feel like if I were to get them fairly soon, by the time I host another event, because I have this venue, there's been this like anti-animal cruelty thing because pets are considered the same as property. And there was an incident that happened. So I had some publicity lately. A news crew came out and this group has decided they want to do a number of them here. I feel like if I were to have some in the near future when I'm having these events, that it could get some news footage and somebody might ask what it's about. If you have those, I'd be happy to put them out and see if we can get some publicity. That should probably be tied into local activities then, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. There's sort of a couple ways you could do it to make the print run more economical. It's just where we would house them. Allison, I think we ought to put together a working group around yep. structuring all this local activities and find the local sponsor who's going to lead those activities. And then what does the kit look like and what are we expecting over a 90 day period to have happen? Yep. Okay. Mary, you have your hand up. Question? Yeah, I'm just kind of new to the whole group thing. So I'm trying to just kind of get a feel for everything. And I've really been involved with that whole community. That is the actual way to get it done from my point of view. Yeah, I'm going to be driving the East Coast and then circle back down a little bit further over into Tennessee. So I look forward to kind of visiting with everybody and see the project. Maybe I can help with some of that connectivity thing. That's obviously, everything needs organization, not my forte, but I'm getting around. So I'm happy to swing over to Naples and hopefully see some of the guys over there tomorrow. It's always good to see everybody get tuned in like this. So I just wanted to tell you that you guys are looking good. Thanks, Kirk. I'll come, Kirk. Safe travels. <laughs> Yeah, well, like I said, I'm going to be going up and down. I um, probably don't get out as far as Chicago, but anything in between is open for the next month. That's sort of my plan, <laughs> up to Ottawa and back down. Oh, you're going up to Ottawa. 
Ooh. and then back to Key West. So I'm I'm based out of Key West at the moment. I'll be in the the Tampa area end of August. I'm definitely up and back and forth between there. We're trying to do stuff in Sarasota, but I you know getting organized is the key that you guys are laying down. Signs are good, but as you keep going back to the the connectivity part of it, where we reduce the redundancy and overlap, tooling up funding ideas is premier uh, got to be done. I got some stuff to add in that hopefully in the near future, but I don't like to promise what I can't deliver. So. Yeah, thank you, Kirk. And I wanted to mention that I've spent some time over the last week inviting a lot of people to follow us through Facebook as well as LinkedIn. We've got good growth over this past week from my efforts. If you ever are social surfing, just remember to go to the Hot Planet Repair team page and invite some folks that way. You'll pique their interest and then they'll start cruising around and get into the action motivation mode. I think that's, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Let's well, wrap it up, guys. Thank you for your time today, guys. Thank yeah. you. A lot of exciting things going on. Thank you for your help and participation. We're growing something really exciting here. So thanks again. I've got Woody Wood over here on the side. He's <laughs> saying hello. Yes. <laughs> giving us Hi, Woody. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> great. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys. Peace. Thank Have you, Have a great long weekend, everyone. Thank you.